when you're used to working at a deliberate pace, it, it, you just feel like you're constantly working fast. And a lot of pitchers aren't comfortable doing this. If you look at the screen here, the difference between 2022 and 2023. In 2022, he has it, he's ready to throw this pitch on the right-hand part of your screen at 13 seconds. This is almost five seconds later. It almost gets right down to 20, and he hasn't even thought about it, so this would have been a violation right there. There's a huge difference between 13 seconds and 21 seconds. That's an eternity. And then the changeup, which is really his main weapon. He's got a good fastball. It's sneaky, but he needs the changeup. 2023, he's got to get it. He's got to get it loaded, get his sign, and he delivers it in 10 seconds. What happens? Boom, rapid fire. He gets a base hit. Look on the left. 18, 19, almost 18 seconds. That's another eternity between a good changeup and a bad changeup. And when it really matters, too, when you get runners on base or you get some guys in traffic and you have to pitch out of the stretch. 2023, he's got to be ready. The hitter's in the box. He's got to deliver. Boom. At 10 seconds, another one. Straight away center field. He's at 17 seconds right here, and he hasn't even thought about delivering a pitch yet. So it is a, a, a difference. It, it's almost like this, Matt. Like, you, you take, like, a, 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 in basketball, a guy that can shoot. If you're really slow and deliberate, you'll never get your shot off. So you've got to be able to catch the ball and get rid of it and shoot it quickly to get your shot off. And it's hard to do that. It's much harder to work fast and be good than it is to work slow. And I, and I know that it sounds hard to believe, but what this does, too, it makes you feel like you're constantly in this. It's almost like when you go hit balls at a driving range. It's just one after another. You start rapid firing, and all of a sudden it's boom, but you stop thinking, and you start throwing. And it's going to be a problem for some pitchers, and it's going to be a problem for catchers, too, because it almost makes it impossible to take the air out of the ball or an inning starting to get right. away from you where you can, hey, walk out to the mound, a guy can step off, and this thing can happen really fast. He's going to struggle with this. You and know, it's, it's interesting, too, and I want to ask you this yeah. from a hitter standpoint he was told last year on a couple of occasions by umpires you got to get out here quicker like right. his his kind of tranquilo thing it's not just between pitches it's between innings if you're a hitter in the box dude's not on the mound yet I mean you're getting frozen in the box as well I mean you're trying to figure out how can I stay in, into my legs as I'm standing up here because sometimes you're standing here so long that you're almost in between. Do I try to call timeout? Do I step out the box? What am I doing? And then he waits so long that the, by the time he's delivering his pitch, you find yourself a little bit flat foot. You're trying to stay engaged with your legs. And it's, I mean, it's really annoying, honestly, when a pitcher takes that long to go to the go to the dish. But I think for the pitcher, maybe he's able to execute his pitch. He's, he's not missing the spots. Like you were saying earlier, if he's rushing, he's going to make more mistakes and you have the hitters more engaged. It works just like defense behind the pitcher. When the pitcher works fast, mm. your defense is, they're ready to go. They're on the balls of their feet. They're ready to react. Sometimes when the pitcher takes too long, it works against you and that I'll get on my heels on defense, I'll lose my focus a little bit and it could hurt you that way. So there are benefits and, and, and some harm in taking too long to go to the dish.